Welcome to a Code Report algorithms video. This is the first algorithms video in our algorithm series. In this series, we're going to be covering both STL algorithms and generic algorithms. But in this first video, we're going to be covering two STL algorithms from the algorithms library, std sort and std stable sort. Uh, so there are 85 algorithms in the STL algorithms library. And so slowly but surely, we're going to get through all of them. So std sort, this is an algorithm with linear rhythmic time complexity, that's big O of n log n, that you can use to order the elements of a container from begin to end, begin and end being parameters, iterators that you pass to the sort function. The ordering by default is ascending for numeric values and lexicographical ascending for string values. So lexicographical just means the order you would find it in a dictionary. Ordering of equivalent elements are not guaranteed to keep their same order. So let's take a look at some examples to see how this function works. So here we're just declaring a vector of integers uh, using our initializer list. And initially, this is set to 2, 3, 4, and 1. So our print function, it's not defined here, but I'll show it briefly up in this top corner. It just prints out the elements of whatever structure you pass it and puts spaces in between them. Uh, so this line, print v, will output 2, 3, 4, 1. And then if we sort our vector by passing the begin iterator and the pass the end element iterator, uh, it'll sort our vector. And then if we call print again, it'll output 1, 2, 3, 4. So most of you have probably seen this. Nothing fancy going on here. Moving on to our next example, we don't necessarily need to sort the whole array. So here we are once again uh, declaring a vector of integers using an initializer list. Uh, it, we print it out uh, and it's just going to print out how we initialized it, 3, 2, 1, 4. And here we're calling the sort function, but instead of passing the uh, iterator pointing to the beginning and the iterator pointing to the past the end element were uh, giving it a, for the second parameter a iterator that's pointing to the third element so it's only going to sort the first two elements uh, and so uh, it's going to go from 3214 to outputting 2314 so you can do partial sorts of data structures or containers here is a slightly different example, just using uh, strings instead of numeric values, integers. Uh, so we declare once again our vector using an initializer list to be equal to most dog, cat, ant, moth, and elephant. So I tried to contain uh, different strings of different lengths, uh, some that have the same first uh, character. And if we call print, it's just going to output the same order, most dog, cat, ant, moth, and elephant. And if we call sort, it's going to rearrange it so that it's in the order that you would find it in a dictionary, lexicographical order. So ant, cat, dog, elephant, moth, and mouse. Uh, so this becomes interesting now uh, when we uh, use make use of lambdas uh, to sort it in a custom manner that we want to. So in this example, we haven't changed anything other than adding this line here where we declare a lambda expression, otherwise known as a lambda, and we're going to pass that as our third parameter to our sort function. And I'll make another video uh, where I explain sort of in detail the different parts of a lambda, but all you need to know is that whenever you're using a lambda with a uh, sort function, you just need to add this boilerplate. Note that uh, you can only use auto with C++14. This is called a generic lambda. If you're using C++11, instead of auto, you need to use string. Uh, but this is always going to be the same. This is just sort of boilerplate. And then you define in here sort of the uh, operation for which you want to sort it. So uh, by sorting it based on size, it's going to sort it from sm the smallest string in terms of length to the largest string in terms of length. So, so sure enough, we're still at the beginning outputting mouse, dog, cat, ant, moth, and elephant. Uh, but after sorting it using this lambda expression, it's going to output uh, ant, cat, dog, moth, mouse, elephant, because elephant's the largest, and then moth, uh, mouse, and then moth, and then these three uh, could be interchangeable. So note that I was uh, testing this with MSVC, and it actually did maintain the order of uh, dog, cat, and ant, but that's not guaranteed uh, when using sort. Uh, that's what stable sort is for. So let's take a look at stable sort. 
So very similar, uh, it's an algorithm with linear rhythmic time complexity as well that you can use to order your elements of a container from begin to end. Uh, the ordering by default is the same as for stable sort, but note this last line, ordering of equivalent elements are guaranteed to keep the same order. So that's the only difference. Uh, so if we go back to the same example and all we do is change uh, sort to stable sort, uh, that's the only difference from the last example we looked at. Uh, we'll notice that uh, the way it is outputting after we sort is uh, maintaining the order of all the elements with the same length so because dog cat and ant they all have length three uh, it's going to maintain that order after we sort uh, so that is what stable sort is for and one extra uh, neat fact at the end is that uh, most implementations of std sort are using a sort called intro sort, which is a hybrid of quick sort and heap sort. And uh, there are slight variations to this and optimizations depending on the implementation, uh, but you can read more about that uh, on the Wikipedia page. I'll leave a link in the description down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.